you do not want to miss Modern Warfare 3 Season 3, because this season has the potential to be one of the biggest and best DLC seasons we've ever had in a Call of Duty game. Six multiplayer maps, four game modes, fan favorite weapons returning, new perks, new vests, new equipments, tons of aftermarket parts, but most importantly, hey, Snoop Dogg is back again. So let's get into it. JDs and gentlemen, Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 is looking pretty amazing. This is the roadmap for the season. Last year with Modern Warfare 2, this is what the Season 3 <laughs> roadmap was looking like. I mean, I don't even want to get into it. Back in Modern Warfare 2, we got banger maps such as Leo's Lighthouse. And who could forget? Black Gold. Oh, oh, that amazing night vision map. Oh, that was such a great choice. But last and certainly not least, we also got Alboran Hatchery, better known as sit in the back of the map the entire game and just camp. <laughs> that was a fun one. Really, the only redeeming quality was the intervention. But we need to go back to Modern Warfare 3 because look at this. Wedge Whammer Wames back at it again. This right here is how you do a DLC season in a live service Call of Duty game. Now, I am trying to keep my expectations in check. I don't want to get too overly excited or too hyped and then have it turn out to be garbage. But just the sheer quantity of stuff that we have here is beyond anything we've ever seen. Got to put a slight asterisk on that though, because... <laughs> Zombies is still looking pretty rough, but we'll get into that in a sec. But let's start with multiplayer. Sledgehammer Games has collabed with Beanox to deliver six multiplayer maps for season three. That's incredible. And even though there is some rehashed and remastered content in here, there are some new maps and they are looking pretty good. The first map we have here is called Six Star. This one's going to be available at launch. It's a brand new map. It's a core 6v6 medium sized map. And honestly, it's getting some raid Black Ops 2 vibes for sure. And not just in the color scheme and the fact that there is water, but if you look at the map layout, on the left, this does kind of look like raid. There are some key differences though. I don't think we're gonna have a basketball court over here and I'm not seeing any kind of opening line of sight for snipers necessarily, unless of course you can shoot through this suggestive shaped object. But on top of that, there's gonna be another brand new launch map called Emergency. This is also gonna be a core 6v6 map and they're saying that it is small size. And if you look at the map layout on the left, that does look like a pretty small map. From the pictures, I'm sort of getting some high rise vibes just based off of how it looks. I gotta be honest, I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna play out because I'm sure a lot of people will go to that second story area where the helicopter is and potentially camp on people who could be spawning out in the open, I'm just saying. But you guys already know, I love small to medium sized maps if they're done well in Call of Duty games. and this one could be pretty good. Next up, we have another multiplayer map coming at the launch of season three, and this is called Grow House. This is a remastered version of Sphere from Call of Duty Vanguard. And say what you will about Vanguard, but Sphere was actually a pretty decent DLC map, and it's interesting to see it coming back in Modern Warfare 3. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this map was definitely rebranded to fit a 420 event, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, if you liked Sphere and Vanguard, I think you're going to like it in Modern Warfare 3 as well. But next up, we have another map that's coming at the launch of season three called Tanked. They're describing this as a repurposed 6v6 map that's going to be medium sized and this is apparently a point of interest from Warzone that is now going to be playable in multiplayer. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting some serious Black Ops 3 aquarium vibes because I mean this takes place in an aquarium. Now, this layout isn't meant to replicate Black Ops 3's aquarium, but I am weirdly kind of seeing some similarities, but it is going to be a medium-sized map, so it's not going to be as fast-paced, but it could turn out to be pretty good. Next up is our fifth map coming to multiplayer later in the season. It's going to be a repurposed section from Rebirth Island, and it's going to be 6v6 and small size. In Rebirth Island, this area is known as the Stronghold, and I mean, as far as it goes for a small-sized map, the layout does look a little strange, particularly in this section right here. It looks very open, and I would would imagine that people could maybe get spawn trapped really easily, but we'll have to see how that plays out. But yeah, it looks pretty neat. And last but not least, we have our sixth and final map for the season called Grime. This is also going to be a mid-season map. It's going to be a brand new 6v6 small to medium-sized map though. And I'm not gonna lie, this one is looking a little funky. It's kind of giving off some Skid Row vibes, but if you look at the actual map overview right here, I'm not too sure what to make of this. And it looks like we're gonna have a swimmable area at the bottom, I'm assuming. I don't think I would classify this one as a small size map. This one's definitely looking more medium-sized. But the main reason I'm a little iffy on it is because it is kind of a three lane map, but it gets that fourth lane with the swimming and I just don't know how that's going to play out. I could have sworn we had a similar kind of map last year with Modern Warfare 2. Like I think, I don't know if it was like Vondel Waterfront, but I swear we had a map that was kind of similar to this kind of layout. Beyond that, we have four game modes coming to multiplayer with season three. First off, we have the return of Capture the Flag, which is pretty interesting. It feels like we haven't really had CTF in quite a while, and that used to be a staple game mode of a lot of the older Call of Duty games. I don't know exactly how it's going to play out in Modern Warfare 3. I feel like with all of the extra gadgets and killstreaks and field upgrades and stuff, 
it's going to get a little complicated. Like, I feel like Capture the Flag is one of those game modes that can be played in a very annoying way. Now, this is just my opinion, but one of my favorite COD games to play CTF in was World at War. I don't know what it was about that game, but just the fact that we had weapons that didn't have as big of magazines and stuff and the time to kill was just a little bit slower. Specific to Capture the Flag, it could lead to some really tense moments where you're trying to hit someone, but they're getting away and you don't have enough ammo to kill them and stuff. It was just, it was crazy. I'm kind of anticipating CTF to be a little bit cheesier, like people are going to be using some cheesy stuff in the game mode to just get cheap kills and kind of make it less fun, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up, they're bringing back one in the chamber, which I don't really think that many people are that excited for one in the chamber. Like, it's a good party game mode, but this is the kind of thing that really should be at the game at launch. I mean, honestly, CTF could be as well. Yeah, honestly, I'm just not as thrilled to see this come back because they kind of do this every year at this point. They treat this as like a limited time game mode instead of just keeping it as a staple party game mode. The main reason I'm excited to see CTF come back is because it feels like we don't get this as often. But yeah, later in the season, we're going to be getting a new game mode called Minefield. And honestly, this one just sounds very annoying. <laughs> just let me read you guys the description. In the same way that season two's Horde Point was hard point, but with zombies, Think of Minefield as multiplayer, but with mines. Yeah, we definitely want that. Anyway, currently applicable to almost any current game mode, Sledgehammer Games will be switching on this game variant in a variety of modes like Kill Confirmed, Domination, and Hardpoint. Minefield uses the same rules as the mode in question, but with one important addition. When you defeat a rival player, a proximity mine is dropped at the enemy's corpse. So we basically have Bouncing Betty Martyrdom. This sounds terrifying. Anyway, this mine cannot be picked up and remains deadly to the enemy team. Team, but not to any friendly teammates. As the action heats up, the scattered mines across the map ramp up the action to a cacophony of chaos. Watch your step out there, operator. Yeah, what? This sounds horrible. Like, it's like a bouncing Betty nightmare. I don't know who asked for this or who wants this, but this is going to be one of the stupidest, most rage inducing game modes. And I mean, I don't know. It could be fun. It sounds terrible, though. We'll have to wait and see. But the last game mode they want to bring in with season three is definitely the most interesting one to me. Later in the season, we're getting a game mode called Escort. And as you can see, it looks like we're going to be moving a robots and while it does sound similar to Black Ops 3 Safeguard, after reading the description, it doesn't quite sound like that. You'll see. Those Call of Duty Warzone veterans who remember playing the entertaining limited time mode known as Payload know what to expect here as two teams, both with unlimited respawns, face off on a variety of maps with one side protecting a maw as it maneuvers across the map. Meanwhile, the opposing force has enemy takedowns and the grand prize of vehicular destruction on their minds. The attacking team's overriding goal is to ensure the vehicle reaches its destination. The defending team's plan of attack is to disable the vehicle by any means necessary. Once the first game of the match is completed, the teams swap objectives and the side with the quickest vehicle takedown wins. Now, I gotta keep it real with you guys. I don't think I played Payload in Warzone, so I don't even know if I consider myself a Warzone veteran. I'm definitely the veteran from the US Merc, and I remember this being in Black Ops but it doesn't sound like it's going to play out quite the same. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's sounding like the defending team has to fully destroy the vehicle and however far you progress the vehicle is, you know, where you end up in terms of progressing the game mode. And then you're going to switch sides and the other team has a chance to move it as well. And basically whoever gets it the furthest will be the winning team. I don't know if it will have a third round of like overtime or something, if the teams tie or whatever. This escort game mode sounds decent, but I don't know exactly how it's going to play out if everyone is just solely focused on destroying the objective. What I really like to about Safeguard and Black Ops 3 was just how it made the maps flow. The spawns were just really consistent. There was a really good flow on the map when you were playing that game mode. And I feel like that could be present here with this game mode if the spawns are handled correctly. But unfortunately, spawns have kind of been a pain point for Modern Warfare 3. Like sometimes Sledgehammer gets it right and they have been trying to tweak and improve the spawns on certain maps, but the spawns are not always the best on this game. If they can nail it for a game mode like this, then sign me up. This could be an amazing game mode. But if it's done poorly and if people are just, you know, trying to spam the objective and destroy it, as fast as possible and using like overly meta stuff, then it could be very unfun. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Yo, my bad. It looks like later in the season, they're also bringing back Vortex. So if you like to play that kind of stuff, it's coming back. Here's some ranked play stuff for Modern Warfare 3 Season 3. These are the different rewards you can get at different ranks as you progress through the season. It's not anything too crazy. And as you get more wins throughout the season, you can get some different stuff. And honestly, the only one here that really stands out is the Rock On sign. I'm kidding. It's when you get 50 wins, <laughs> hold this L. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, once you get 50 wins, you're just going to make everyone salty when you're... I, I don't know if that's a sticker. Oh no, it's a decal. So you can put that decal on your guns, man. That's fantastic. There's also different rewards for different skill divisions. Obviously, you know, if you hit like top 250 or number one, that's probably going to be the best rewards, but still just judging from this, it's not anything too crazy. But next up, there's going to be a ton of new perks and equipment coming in the season. As you can see here, we have a gunslinger vest, a modular assault rig, compression carrier, reinforced boots, which kind of look funny, by the way, <laughs> high gain antenna. And there's also more, I think. Let's check it out. The first new vest is the gunslinger vest, which will be available at launch. And it's going to be a second 
secondary weapon specialist. So you won't have a primary weapon, but you will have your secondary weapon. Now, I don't know if you're going to have two secondary weapons or if you're just going to have one, but either way, this is going to be a pretty strong vest as you see as we keep reading. You'll get four equipment slots, so you'll get two tacticals, a lethal, and a field upgrade, which is pretty standard, but you'll also get four gear slots. So you'll be able to choose your gloves, boots, and two pieces of gear, but it's the benefits of the vest that sounds really strong. These are the following benefits when you're using secondary weapons while using this vest. You will refresh your stamina on kill, you'll get improved reload speed, reload while sprinting, increases the weapon swap speed by a minimum of 40% depending on the weapon, and you'll also spawn with maximum reserve ammo. This is giving you so many free perks. This vest honestly sounds pretty broken, but you do have to keep in mind that you have to be using a secondary weapon while using this vest, otherwise you don't get any of these benefits right here. But man, if you're planning to use like a really OP pistol build or even a launcher build or something, maybe even melee weapons, this could be a really solid vest. Next up, we have another new vest called the Modular Assault Rig, and this will be available at launch as well. This one's not as exciting because it's mostly just giving you extra lethal and tacticals and stuff. You will spawn in with two tacticals, two lethals, and your field upgrade, and you'll get three gear slots, and you're going to start with maximum reserve ammo, and you'll resupply lethals and tacticals from dead players, but beyond that, it's not anything too crazy, but it does give us some more options. We're also going to be getting the compression carrier vest at the launch of season three, which says assisted healing and gas protection. This does reduce your equipment to just having one lethal, which is not the best, and you'll only have three gear slots with gloves, boots, and gear, but what really makes this vest pretty strong and pretty great is that it will immediately regenerate your health after a kill or objective capture, which is essentially the quick fix vest of the game. And on top of that as well, it's going to reduce the effects from gas grenades. So if you're tired of getting farted on, this is going to be a pretty good vest. We're also getting some brand new boots on the ground for season three. We're going to have the reinforced boots, which is going to make you immune to movement reduction effects, which could be pretty solid if you're tired of getting stunned and not being able to move. I'm assuming these boots would also be pretty effective against the fart grenades in the game as well. But come on, Sledgehammer. This was a prime opportunity to bring back shades from World at War. This would have made way more sense. Come on, we could have blocked out all of these annoying grenades with swag, but instead we're just going to have some steel toe boots or something like that. Like, I don't know. It's because it was too good. This was the best perk choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to new gear. We also have the high gain antenna. It says the minimap is zoomed out for you and nearby allies. Enemies remain on radar longer for you and nearby allies. If a nearby ally has the CCT comms vest perk, and you can also see nearby ally radar pings from the Intel jacker and compass indicators from nearby ally signal jammers. Honestly, this just sounds like a bunch of nonsense. I don't think anyone's going to use this. Let's keep going. Later in the season, there's going to be a new tactical called the EMD mine. It's a proximity triggered mine that sticks to surfaces. Once triggered, the mine shoots out tracker devices that reveal the enemy location and direction until it's removed. That sounds annoying. Don't really see why we need to have this in the game, but there you go. I mean, at least it's not going to be here at the start of the season. Now, this one sounds and looks pretty interesting. It's a new field upgrade called Enhanced Vision Goggles, which is EVG. Not to be confused with NVGs, which are the night vision goggles. That's what I thought it was going to be at first, but it says toggle between normal vision and enhanced vision with integrated target highlighting, and it has a limited battery. Now, this is just a screenshot of what it looks like in game. I really don't feel like this is going to help you find enemies. I mean, it kind of gives them a red outline, but I feel like it's also heavily distorting your vision. We'll just have to see how it plays out, but this doesn't sound that great. But next up, we're moving on to the Modern Warfare Zombies overview, and here's all the brand new content for zombies. Story mission, Dark Aether Quest, schematics, and a new warlord. Moving on to Warzone. <laughs> Zombies players, I'm so sorry. I mean, it's not my fault, so I shouldn't be apologizing, but I just, I feel so bad. Zombies in Modern Warfare 3 is basically dead. It's done. This kind of stuff of just getting the absolute bare minimum is all it's going to be. Unfortunately, Modern Warfare 3 Zombies did launch in a good state, and a lot of people turned out to really like and enjoy it, but the DLC content is just abysmal. It's honestly just bad. I think I would legitimately rather see them not put any of this stuff into the game and just chalk it up to just being dead. Just, just stop. Treyarch, take the wheel! <laughs> but yeah, there's all kinds of new stuff for Warzone, but as you guys know, I don't really play Warzone. I'm mostly covering multiplayer stuff, so we're just going to skip on to the next section. It's not that Warzone's bad, I just, I'm not really playing it. I'm playing the mobile version of it, weirdly enough. But it looks like there might be a ton of stuff for Warzone. I don't really know. We're just going past it. My god, does it ever end? Warzone rank stuff, it's basically the same as multiplayer, and then, okay, they have a Warzone mobile section. Jesus. We get it. You guys love Warzone. Okay, here we go. This is the best part of the blog by far. You guys have to see this. The first new gun we have for Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 is the FJX Horus. This is a submachine gun. It will be available at launch in the Battle Pass in Sector 8. When I first saw this image, I was thinking like MP7 or MP9, something like that. But Advanced Warfare did have the MP11. And it doesn't quite look the same. But Season 3 for Modern Warfare 3 was rumored to be the Advanced Warfare Season. And maybe this is what they're doing. I think there was some speculation or some leaks about the ASM 
Venom 1 coming back in Modern Warfare 3, but this is clearly not it. This is something different. They're saying that it's going to be versatile. It's going to have a high fire rate. I mean, I don't know. It could be the MP11. What do you guys think? Oh my God, dude, but this is the best part of the season right here. Without a doubt, ladies and gentlemen, the Moors sniper rifle is coming back. It's going to be here at launch at Battle Pass Sector 4, so it should be pretty quick and easy to get. A single load railgun delivers a high damage payload with excellent velocity and penetration. Oh my God, guys, the quick bolt, the silver bullets, the doctor is coming back. Oh my God, dude. And the best part is you don't have to pay for any supply drops. You don't have to buy, oh, you, you might have to buy the battle pass, but you don't have to open up supply drops to try to get a good version of the gun. You're just going to be able to get this. Bringing back the Moors into Modern Warfare 3 has to be one of the best decisions I've seen in a while. Like this sniper rifle was so much fun to use in advanced warfare. You didn't have to reload a magazine. It would just keep rechambering shot after shot, which would allow you to just keep going on massive streaks. It was so much fun to use. And we have to keep in mind that advanced warfare came out almost a decade ago. So people haven't even necessarily used this gun. Like there's going to be a new generation of players experiencing this gun for the first time. And it's just going to be a blast. It's going to probably rival the longbow in terms of like quick scoping and going for clips and stuff. I don't know. I just think it's going to be a blast to use, but there's something even better coming up in a sec. After that, we have the gladiator melee weapon. This is going to be available at launch in the battle pass at sector 15. It's basically the shadow daggers from counter-strike. I don't know how good it's going to be. It says that it rivals the karambit for supreme mobility, handling, and damage potential. I don't know if this is going to be like the most hype melee weapon or if it's going to be that cool. I know some people really do like the shadow daggers and hopefully it at least has a cool inspection or something. But guys, I don't know how else to say this, but the bow is coming back. I use bow because it's good. <laughs> oh my god, dude. It's just, it's so classic, dude. Oh man, the bow, especially the obsidian seed variants, was just so gross. This thing was so powerful in advanced warfare. And for Modern Warfare 3, this is how they describe it. A bullpup prototype weapon designed to increase fire rate over time while the trigger is squeezed. The first four shots are slower to fire, but highly accurate. <laughs> yeah, they even say that it shreds at closer ranges, but it has a moderate kick that drifts upwards. It has default reticles, and it comes with a 60 round magazine once you've leveled it up, doubling the available ammo between reloads. This thing is probably going to be one of the best assault rifles in the game for Modern Warfare 3. Do not mess with the bow. Unless, of course, the bow is somehow not overpowered when it comes out at the start of Modern Warfare 3 Season 3. I'm sure a ton of people will be complaining. It'll probably have to get removed out of Warzone or nerfed or something like... Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I can't wait, man. It's gonna be nuts. Especially... I mean, look at this! They're bringing back the Model 1887 Akimbo in the form of an aftermarket part. Now, hopefully it will work when they add it, but yeah. It looks like there could be some pretty crazy aftermarket parts for the weeklies. Here's some more examples of the aftermarket parts that they have. Now, I'm not exactly sure what all of these are, but we have the Jack Shadow Titan kit for the Bruin MK9. I'm not exactly sure what to make of this just based off the picture, but we do have the Jack Cutthroat for the M4 from Modern Warfare 2, and then we also have the Jack Revenger kit for the BP-50. But yeah, let's check out all of the aftermarket parts and what they could do. The first thing is the Jack Cutthroat, and it's going to be compatible with the MCW, the MTZ, the M4 from Modern Warfare 2, and the AMR9 from Modern Warfare 3 SMG. It's a 3D printed stock that provides an unrivaled combination of speed and stability while aiming down sights. Okay, yeah, that's not nearly as exciting. Let's keep going. The Jack Revenger kit for the BP-50 is a conversion kit that will turn the BP-50 into a close quarters legend, a 9mm caliber conversion kit with shortened receiver and high capacity magazine. Okay, that could be pretty good. Next up is the Jack Jawbreaker. It's for the KV broadside. Oh, gross. From Modern Warfare 2. It's the Brecci. Converts the shotgun into a hard-hitting automatic battle rifle. Okay, so maybe it could actually make it less annoying. Who knows? After that, we have the Jack Shadow Titan kit for the Bruin MK9. It converts the Bruin MK9 into a compact and integrally suppressed light support weapon chambered in 300 blackout rounds. Yeah, that one sounds okay as well. I mean, it's for an LMG, so. Next up is the Jack Patriot for the M16 in Modern Warfare 2. Now, this one sounds pretty interesting. It says it converts the M16 into a fully automatic rifle with a heavy ported barrel built to provide superior recoil control and firing aim stability. So basically turning it into the M4. I mean, it could be good though. We'll have to see how it turns out. This one sounds the most interesting and it is the Wardens for the Lockwood MK2 from Modern Warfare 2. It says relive the glory days, stir up the hornet's nest, and take down your enemies, leaving no loose ends with these museum-worthy akimbo lever action shotguns, which confirms that the model 1887 akimbos are coming back, and this is by far going to be the most hyped one for sure. Can't wait to unlock and use this one. Next up, we have the Jack Atlas kit for the AMR9 SMG, and it converts the AMR9 into an extremely lethal and accurate five round burst carbine chambered in 556. That's going to actually turn it into the AMR9 from Advanced Warfare. So we have another Advanced Warfare weapon confirmed. That's crazy. Oh my God. What, wait, what is this? The photonic charge barrel for the Moors. This 
this hyper advanced barrel is more than simply a barrel. Holding the trigger charges the rifle and releasing fires a single high power energy projectile. <laughs> what? What is that going to do? I don't know if that's going to make it more like the silver bullet where it's going to do like a more powerful attack and almost kind of guarantee that you could hit a trick shot or if it's going to just straight up fire a different round because they are saying that it's going to be a high power energy projectile. So maybe it might have like a slow travel time, but that sounds crazy, man. Now they're saying it's a redacted unlock. So maybe this is going to be later in the season. I don't think we'll be able to have access to this one in particular initially, but this is the reason why I like the aftermarket parts. I mean, it gives us something to look forward to every single week. Now, sometimes obviously the weekly challenges and the stuff we get is better than other weeks. And sometimes it just straight up doesn't work at all, but I do look forward to this stuff. And I hope that these aftermarket parts are pretty good this time around and that they do work. Next up, we have the Black Cell stuff. I'm not super interested in that, but obviously they're going to be probably covering bundles in a bit. Tier 100, you get Makarov. And, well, wait, what? Snoop is in the battle pass? Wait, what? Is that for real? It says Snoop Dogg 2. He's remastered. He's available at launch for Specru. He's an instant reward sector. So maybe if you buy the Black Cell, you'll get Snoop. I don't know. They're going to give all of us a free gift. It's a Call of Duty Warzone 4th anniversary pack. The gun's looking kind of crazy. That, that's a pretty cool looking blueprint. Got all kinds of stickers from different maps and points of interest and stuff from Warzone. It looks kind of neat. That's going to be available on April 3rd to claim. Hey, man, we got the Cheech and Chong Tracer pack. This is going to be a crazy bundle. I don't know if it's going to drop on 420, but there is going to be some kind of 420 event in the game as well. It looks awesome. We also got some previews for the Godzilla and Kong bundles. I mean, I don't know if I care that much about the skins, but I definitely, definitely want that finishing move where you can yeet people like a thousand yards. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Like this one right here. What is this weed sloth, dude? And we have a lizard. We have a brain with eyeballs. I mean, these four skins look ridiculous. But realistically, I don't think anyone's taking the game this seriously at this point. I mean, we had so many crazy bundles come in and carry forward from Modern Warfare 2, so they can just keep going insane with it if they want. I'm guessing this is going to be the final camo that you unlock by doing all of the weeklies over the course of probably eight weeks for season three. This one's not looking that crazy from what I can tell. Oh my god, the sloth, I can't. I can't. Look at that face. He looks so smug and so high. I love it, dude. <laughs> yeah, here's the blaze up event for Modern Warfare 3. It says, how high are you? Or, I mean, hi, how are you? <laughs> Complete events challenges for exclusively dank rewards. Warning, the events may cause the munchies. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be all kinds of events coming to both Warzone and Modern Warfare 3. It looks pretty good. But yeah, here's also the seasonal prestiging stuff. This stuff is not as interesting to me because I really would prefer a classic prestige system at some point to come back for newer Call of Duty games. But I mean, this is what it's going to be. Beyond that, I don't know if there's too much else. There's going to be some more free trial stuff coming to the game. But yeah, I think we hit the bottom. That's it for Modern Warfare 3 Season 3. And I can't believe I just said that's it because this has to be one of the biggest DLC seasons, regardless if it's like paid or free for any Call of Duty game. This is amazing. Wedge Whammer Wames has really stepped up. Now, this is just my opinion, but I feel like there is so much to look forward to for the season. And if you still have Modern Warfare 3 and you're still playing it, I wouldn't want to miss out on the season. It actually looks really good. Mostly because of Snoop Dogg. But yeah, from my point of view, Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 is looking really good, but I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this season? Definitely let me know in the comments below. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you want to see some Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 stuff when it drops next week. I can't wait. Oh, that was good. Outcome. Oh,